are trying, but she needs to be more than wine and dine. Playing this music in recognition of Women's History Month, even though every month should be Women's History Month. It's called She's Royal by Tyrus Riley. The title says it all. So divine. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Your energy is illuminating the space already. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> you know, I normally let some reggae music. I'm a, I'm a GT Bonner. Yeah, George I love reggae, so this is perfect. From Georgetown, Guyana. So every show I try to start off with, I try to start off with some, with some nice vibes just to set the tone. You know, I gotta I say, like I do not. I do not own the rights to the music because you know how Instagram and all that get. Right. But um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm gonna Thank give a couple you. more people some time to get in here. You know, I love, I love bringing my my guests in right. So I'm gonna start by playing one of my new favorite songs that just definitely made my playlist. And hopefully after this interview, it'll make quite a few more, you know, playlists. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome, welcome. You're now tuned in to the TKP Report. And I'm your host, Mr. Three Keys. And today's guest. Is none other than a singer, songwriter, producer, a mixer, a masterer, a studio engineer, a motivator, an ex exorbitant amount of extremely great energy. This is my first time ever meeting a young lady, but I just feel it through the music that she's made thus far that I've heard, and I hope to hear even more. We can get into comparisons as to who I think she can be compared to, but I just got a feeling at some point that gap will be so wide that she will be standing all by herself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to my show, tuned in with the TKB Report, Miss Tokyo Extraordinaire. Thank you, thank you. That's an extraordinary uh, intro. I appreciate you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> When, when, when I get when I get special guests, and all my guests are special in the most unique fashion, I try to bring them in. It's only right to bring them in in that way, you know, because I created this platform to celebrate contributors to the culture and give you flowers while you can smell them, uh, like yourself. So Tokyo extraordinary, extraordinary. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. For sure. Yeah. So I tried my best to give a as, as grandiose an introduction as I could. You know, maybe you could tell the people a little bit. Maybe you could tell the people a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I can. Um, I'm originally from Miami. I grew up half Miami, half Miramar. My mom lived in Miami with the rest of my family. My dad lived in Miramar, Florida. Um, so I grew up experiencing both sides. Um, moved to Tallahassee in 2009 and go to FAMU. Shout out to all my rattlers. Um, I've been up here on and off about 10 years now. I took some time off from school, went back home, came back. But I've been living in Tallahassee now consistently from 2014 up to now. Um, I've been making music, man, since I was about eight or nine. My cousin in here, my grandma used to have us singing at her church all the time. So that's where it all started at. And um, I started playing the drums at my mom's church that we were going to at the time. And... Uh, from there, started recording, writing, and it's it's come full circle. Just being able to do everything: the production, the writing, the engineering, everything. So it's a blessing to, to be at this this space right now. Well, welcome to everybody that's in the show now. Um, if you're new to the show, I'm Mr. Three Keys. Uh, this is uh, the TKB Report. Report. Follow the TKB Report. And for all my people that's in here, all my family from all over the world, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you go follow Tokyo Music, and we're going to get into that later. So 
welcome. You you mentioned being in the church with your with your with your grandmother and all your cousins and all that. So is that where your intro to wanting to create music is that where it all started? For sure. Um, on the one hand, my grandmother had us singing in the church and playing drums and whatever else she could have you doing. And then my mom at her church, she was in the choir. So I was always just in the church and just hearing music because she would take me to her choir rehearsals. So I think that's why most people point out the melodies and the harmonies of my records. But I get that because I do have church roots and I'm just running around the church and they in the choir singing and, you know, you got the altos and the sopranos and everything going. So, yeah, that's where it definitely started, right in the church for sure. Okay, so with it, with it being a church foundation, I believe they call it secular music. Was it was it a tough transition or a tough decision to not stick with gospel church music and get into more of a popular form of music? Yes and no. Um, yes, because my family is very spiritual and religious, so it was just like, you gonna do what now? And I was a gospel artist, you know, from like maybe 12, 13, up until like 15, 16. So now that you're old enough, it's like, oh, so you turning your back on the faith kind of thing. But that wasn't really the case. Because if you listen to my music now, it is, I would say, a good combination of just my life experiences. But each song I'm still reverencing and be misleading people if I if I were to say I'm just strictly a gospel artist because I'm not so if someone was going into my music thinking I'm a gospel artist they would uh be misled for sure if I was to, to put it out there <laughs> so uh yeah it was it was a, a interesting transition I think honestly what prompted it was when my manager at the time he moved away he used to book all of my shows at churches and things like that and uh, when he moved away, that's when I got into producing for myself and recording myself. And you just start experimenting with different sounds. So I've always been a hip hop fan. Like growing up in the church, I still, you know, you would sneak and listen to, to music that your, your, my mom might not have been playing, but my dad was really into Neo Soul. So all of those things are still influenced in my music because I was still able to get pieces of that throughout my life. So I think I've been able to tie it all together over time. But yeah, it was an interesting transition initially. So now you mentioned hip hop. So if you didn't know, I'm from Jersey. You know what I'm saying? So you 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 down bottom in Florida. We at the top in Jersey. Yeah. What what were the hip hop influences that that kind of helped to shape your sound? So ironically enough, like a lot of up north New York, Jersey, sound Philly, like a lot of those places were like what I was influenced by in terms of hip hop. My sister, she used to play E, Foxy, Kim. Mm -hmm. a lot, she had like a lot of DJ Clue mixtapes. And to this day, I still have no idea where she was getting so much underground <laughs> music from New York from. But she used to always play like Rough Riders and like just so much diversity. So I would say definitely for sure, like in terms of hip hop, my influences were like from up north. And then when you think about some of the Southern artists like Outkast, um, that's kind of where I started to be influenced by other places. Um, Missy Elliott and the Neptunes, and they're from Virginia, so still kind of further north. But yeah, most of my sound, I would say, in terms of hip hop, came from further north versus down south, because down south is more of like a, a heavy bass laid in up north. And obviously that's changed over time. I feel like our artists are much more diverse now because of the internet. But at the time, it was a, a really stark difference of what up north music sounded like and what down south music sounded like, so. Yeah. So the like your your music, you obviously can sing and harmonize, but you kind of flow into a, you know, you you could spit as well, you know, spit respectfully, of course. Appreciate. And th there are only a few. It's honestly one that I could think of that was the best at it ever, and that is the creator of Miss Education of Lauren Hill. Did she ever, like, do, do you ever kind of, you know, pull from that that energy when you when you create music? Not consciously, okay. um, but that album was played so much throughout my father's house. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to say that I that I'm not pulling from it subconsciously because she so effortlessly effortlessly did it, um, just flowing in and out of singing 
and being a super dope lyricist. So yeah, I would be lying if I said that it, it wasn't that I wasn't affected by it or inspired by it. Um, as of right now, I can't say that I'm consciously doing it, but I know that I'm influenced by her style for sure. All right, so I'm I'm gonna tell the people what kind of put you on my radar. Okay. I was, you know, scrolling through Instagram as we all do, and I came across this song. It's called Tell Me. So I hit the button and I hit 15, 20 seconds of however long it is. So I go to the YouTube page. I, I heard the song and I couldn't get I couldn't get the song out of my head. You know, so I'm looking at the video and I'm like, yo, does she produce and direct and 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 all that with the videos as well? Because the visuals and the music um they come together in such a beautiful, effortless uh, way. Can you tell me <laughs> what, what motivated that song? Because it seems like your music doesn't come from a place of you just wanting to entertain. It seems like you, you are extremely passionate and your music, like most of your music, if not all of it, has a message. So talk to me about, you know, what went into creating that song, Tell Me. Um, it's actually, it came about through me working on the album, Clicking, and I was going through an interesting relationship slash breakup at the mm. time, and um, that was my first time putting that kind of information about myself into music, but it was very therapeutic, and everything that I was feeling that I felt like I couldn't say to the person I was in a relationship with, with all of that just went into that album. So tell me, uh, tell me lies was just about how I was feeling at the time. It was just like this person is saying one thing because they are just trying to like push the the topic at hand or the issue at hand under the rug. It's kind of like me just finally venting because I, I feel like I couldn't get those things out to the person I was in a relationship with at the time. And that was just me putting my thoughts, feelings, my everything into the music. So one, I appreciate you noticing that. Yeah, nothing that I write is just because it's Tuesday and I decided to write mostly mm. what I write is about something I'm specifically going through at the time. So yeah, that was uh, interesting that you picked up on that for sure. Absolutely. It's not like I'm just telling some story just because 